Hi everybody and welcome to the American Family Insurance Dream Bank. My name is Nick. I am so happy that you're here with us today. Now here at Dream Bank, we believe that the future is brighter and that communities are stronger when people are actively pursuing their dreams. And sometimes those dreams revolve around creativity. Now in today's video, we are actually doing a soap making tutorial. This is the first time I'm doing it. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, but I think it's gonna go well. We're doing melt and pour soap, which is a little bit more simple. Um, we'll walk through all the steps. This one is great because this is a product that once you have it finished, you can gift it. You know, we're getting into the holiday season, so if you're looking for a handmade gift, this is a great idea. You can also sell it. Okay, so there's entrepreneurial potential with this crap. So I just want to thank you so much for being here with me today, and we will get started. All right, so I'll go over the supplies. And first, I'm going to start with this, uh, which is a soap base. So this is a melt and pour shea butter base. This is a two pound block, and it does have a white color to it because of the, the shea butter that's in it. And then this is a block of clear glycerin soap base. So both of these are glycerin based. Just the white one has the shea butter added to it. We're gonna use both of those today. I do have two scales, one that's a little more precise, the smaller one, and then a larger one as well. I have a big stainless steel spoon that we'll use to stir and mix everything with. A microwave safe container. I'm using this graduated uh, Pyrex container here. Something to cut your soap with at the end. So this is sort of a bench scraper or pastry cutter that I have. You do want something that's gonna be pretty sharp. If you have a, a kitchen knife, that would work really well. A little bowl here for measuring out my fragrance oil. A mold, so this is a silicone loaf pan. And you're gonna to wanna to use silicone um, because it'll be much easier to remove the soap from versus a metal or glass pan. I have a little spritzer of rubbing alcohol, and that's going to come in handy to treat the soap later. This is a colorant. So this is an amethyst, a purple gel tone colorant, so we'll be able to dye the soap a color. Our fragrance, we're doing a lavender soap, and you can see on the label here it says it is soap safe up to 100%. We're only going to use 3% of the fragrance in it, but always make sure that the fragrance oil you're using is skin safe and up to how much you can use. It's something you definitely want to know. And we're going to add a few lavender buds into this one too. So these are food grade uh, lavender buds. So I'm going to start actually with a clear layer of soap and we're going to weigh it out. So it'll be a clear layer of soap with lavender buds in it. And then above that, the white layer, which we're going to dye both of them purple, that'll have the shea butter in it. So I just want, because this is going to be a thin layer at the bottom, just about a half a pound. So this was a two pound block. So I'm just gonna use a quarter of it. And we will weigh that just to make sure that it's close to eight ounces, which is half a pound. This one's nine, it's a little over. Um, that is totally fine. So we will just cut this up. I'll speed that up for you here. And then this is gonna go in the microwave once we have it all weighed out and cut up. And now first I'm gonna figure out how much fragrance oil I need. So it's 3% times the nine ounces. And so it's gonna be 0.27 ounces of fragrance oil. And this is where I like to have this more precise scale. So again, it was nine times 0 0.03 for the 3%. And that's gonna tell me how many ounces of fragrance oil I need. And I just like to have that weighed out ahead of time. So this is gonna go in the microwave for 30 second uh, bursts. You're gonna stir it in between until it's completely melted. This ultimately was in there for maybe about two minutes or so. And you can see it has melted down to just a, its liquid form. And then as this cools, it will harden again. So you're gonna to wanna to work a little gingerly at this point. So I have my colorant and I'm just gonna start adding it a little bit, uh, a few drops at a time. When you're adding it to a clear base, you're gonna get a more true color versus adding it to a white base where your color is gonna mix with the white and become sort of a pastel version of whatever color you have. So we'll stir that in. You can keep adding drops of color until you are happy with the color that it ends up. So I'll add a little bit more here.
we'll give that a good stir. You want to make sure everything is fully incorporated and then we will add the fragrance oil. And this is that lavender fragrance oil. It's going to pair really well with this amethyst or purple color here. And you're going to want to give that a really good stir, maybe for about a minute or so, just to make sure that the oil is fully incorporated. And now I'm going to add some lavender buds to my mold here. And that way, you know, when you unmold this, this will actually be the top. So we're making this in a reverse order. And we will pour in this purple clear layer and get it mixing with those lavender buds in there. So it'll sort of have a decorative top on it. Now, if this starts to harden on you before you get a chance to pour it, you can always pop it back in the microwave and warm it up again. So you can see here by pressing on the side, I can see a skin has started to form as it starts to cool. And that means it's ready to support the next layer. So this next layer, we're actually going to use the full two pound block. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this up and we will melt it down the same way. I'll speed this up for you here. And if you can't fit it all in your container, you can microwave some of it and then add some more and microwave it. One thing to keep in mind is you don't want to scorch your soap, so I would recommend not letting it get over about 160 degrees. If it's in the state that I have it here and there's a few chunks in it, sometimes you can just keep stirring it and those chunks will just melt in the warm uh, soap that's already in there. And just like we did with the clear layer, we're going to add some of that purple amethyst dye into here. And this dye is made for soap making as well. And that's a nice light shade of purple that I wanted. And we are going to add the lavender oil, which we weighed out the same way. So two pounds is 32 ounces. I did 32 times 0 0.03 to know how much fragrance oil I want in there. And keep in mind that you know um, how much fragrance oil you can add. Some of it can't go above a certain percentage and still be skin safe. So I'm just going to pour this onto my spoon just so it lands a little more gently into the mold. And we will just fill this up. You can see it's already starting to thicken there a little bit. We'll give it a spritz with this uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and that'll pop a lot of the bubbles here. Oh, and I didn't mention it, but you do want to spritz that first layer before you put that second layer on. It'll just help the two layers adhere. So now I've waited overnight. This is the next day. I can feel that this is very firm and solid. Uh, it's easy to pull the mold away from the edge of the soap. And it doesn't feel squishy at all. It should be firmly set up. So we will just push up on the bottom and make sure it releases. Turn this over and pull the mold off of it. All right, and you can see we have this clear, purple clear layer on top with the lavender buds embedded in it and then that uh, shea butter layer underneath that has the lavender fragrance in it. We will cut off a slice so you can see what the cross section looks like. And sometimes it takes a little bit of muscle to cut through it nicely. There we go. And now we're going to wrap these. So I like to put them in a uh, plastic wrap first. And then that way that's just going to protect the soap. Sometimes they can sweat a little bit, like have some glycerin beating up on it, and you don't want that getting on the paper you're going to wrap it in. So it's always good just to keep it nice and fresh to wrap it in some plastic wrap. So I'm going to kind of fold that side back, fold this over and fold it back, and that way all the extra plastic is on just one side instead of wrapping it all the way around. And then these two ends you want to make sure are good and tight. So we'll give those a little tug and then pull it over. And the side as well, tighten that up and pull it over. So it'll kind of have one pretty side. And if you were just going to sell this this way or give it this way, you could put a sticker or a label on it to hold all that plastic together on this side and then have a nice smooth side on the other side. And I'm going to trim off a little extra plastic just to make it not so bulky. And if you have a heat gun or something like that, you can just hit it with that and seal the plastic up and press it down a little bit. 
And now I have this roll of brown paper that I actually found in the painting department of the hardware store. It's used for masking areas, so you get a ton of it for very little money. I've got my twine, and I actually have double-sided tape because I don't want to see the tape on this package. That's just a personal preference, so I'm going to hide it and use this double-sided tape. So I'll put this face down, and so that way, you know, the folds and everything will be on the back similar with the plastic wrap. And I'm making some creases here, so I know how much paper I actually need. Fold over the top, and we'll make a few more creases as well. So I just want it to overlap uh, enough to where there's some area to tape, and it'll all hold in place. So this crease I'm making here is where I'm going to cut this paper. We'll get all our scissors, we'll cut through this. And then kind of like closing an envelope, I'm going to put a sort of a sticky area towards the bottom here, and that way where they overlap, they'll just adhere, and you won't see the tape versus maybe using a traditional piece of scotch tape. Let's put this towards the bottom. Now this tape is sticky on both sides. And we'll just fold that over and tack it down and press it into place. Okay, so now we've essentially made a paper tube around the soap. And usually you have some extra on the ends here. You don't need very much because it's a thin bar of soap. Um, and so I'm going to trim off some of that. And then you can press in the two sides, the short sides, and add some creases there. And fold up the bottom. And I'm just going to tuck in any unsightly areas, things that I don't want to be seen. Fold down the top. And sometimes that bar of soap will want to slip down the inside of the paper, so I just pressed it up. We'll get this ready to stick down again with the double-sided tape here. Now you can fold this part under. I'm just going to cut it off just to make it easy. And we'll just fold that down and stick it again to that tape. And if the bar of soap kind of slides down, you can push it back. Just poke your finger in there and push it back down. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So I'll cut off the extra. And then press in the sides and we will crease all of that so everything stays in place. Just going to fold up the bottom side so it'll tuck under nicely. Cut off that little extra bit, or like I said, you can fold that under as well. And just like the first side, a little piece of double-sided tape. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're just going to tie some string around it. I do want to mention that melt and pour soap is very forgiving. If you pour this into your mold and you don't like it or, you know, for some reason it doesn't work out, you can always pop it out and melt it back down again and redo it. So this is a great beginner soap. I highly recommend it. And there's a lot of different bases you can get that clear or white or shea butter or goat milk or green tea. Um, and they all sort of operate the same way, where you just melt them down in the microwave, add a color, add a fragrance, and then pour it into a mold. All right, so I've got this piece of string. Now I'm on the back side. You're going to cross them over and turn it so we sort of made this plus sign. And then that is the back, so we're going to turn it back over. And then this is the front where we're going to make our knot and our bow. And this can be a little tricky with one person. Um, just because you want to keep the, the string snug. 
So I'm going to start just by tying a traditional knot. And then you want to keep that tight. So I'm going to hold it down with my index finger there and tie it with my kind of remaining available fingers here. And I'm just making a double knot just to hold everything in place. And that way I can make the bow without it slipping. Okay, so this is secure. It's secured with a double knot, nice and snug. I've got plenty of extra string. Always cut more string than you think you need. You can trim it up later, and usually you have a ton to begin with anyway. And I will make a nice little bow. Now, if you want to tuck a gift message or like a little um, piece of a plant or a sprig underneath the string, you can definitely do that, and this will make an adorable gift um, and ready for embellishment. All right, and that is about all there is to it. Now you have an awesome uh, loaf or bars of soap that you can cut up, wrap, and give away as gifts or potentially sell online or at a craft fair, things like that. So if you give this one a shot, I would love to see what you make, the different ways that you customize it. So be sure to share it. We do have our Facebook group called Crafting Community, and that's within the Dream Bank Madison Facebook page. I encourage you to join and share what you're working on. We would love to see it. So thank you so much for being here, and we will catch you next time.